You may have heard some buzz about Cyrodiil getting fixed on the PCNA server. I'm here to tell you the backstory, how we got here, what has changed specifically, and show you some big, huge Zerg v Zerg fights for proof if this actually really did change. Too long didn't read here, the hype is real, and on PCNA at least, there's a lot less lag. Zoss, you may have just saved Cyrodiil. Are you ready? I'm at 30 some frames, 40 frames, and I have 70 latency on an amp keep keep that in perspective so you see the frames are dropping but the latency is not that's a good indicator If you were like me, you've been disappointed in Cyrodiil and ZeniMax Online Studios continued over-promising and undelivering regarding the performance and adding any content. Remember the year of performance? Remember the countless tests in Cyrodiil with procs, champion points, need I go on? Frankly, nothing changed. Nothing got better and both the population and the server's performance continued to degrade over 2022 and years previously. So I want to take some time to explain the backstory of what happened recently and how we got to this massive increase in performance and show you some examples. Back on December 9th of 2021, Matt Firer, ZeniMax Online Studio Director, gave a letter to the community talking about some items all the way back from 2020 that were unfulfilled. And I quote, The ESO, EU, and NA data center hardware refresh is ongoing, but our timelines have been greatly extended by the global shortage of computer hardware. To give you an idea of the impact, some key hardware devices are delayed by one year, most are delayed by three to five months. We had intended to have this process complete this year, but it has taken us far longer than we thought it would. This is as frustrating for us as it is to you, trust me. But progress is being made and we'll get there. Well, this was essentially disappointing and true. As a customer and a consumer of the game ESO, it felt like ZeniMax Online Studio was just kicking the can, kicking the problem down yet another month, three months or a year but the positive was that three to five month time window was actually pretty accurate and for once they were transparent with their community on the real life issues that were affecting getting this done but we aren't done with disappointments in early 2022 oh no we got a post on january 10th by gina bruno in the removal of death match only battlegrounds oh no god no no! Yikes. The one thing I like doing when Cyrodiil wasn't working. While this post wasn't related to Cyrodiil, it gives us a clue as to what was going to happen with Battlegrounds. Quote, this will be the last change we make to Battleground queues for the foreseeable future. And it goes on to highlight why they made those changes. Essentially a healthy population, but without Deathmatch only, a lot of the serious and hardcore had moved on from the game, further reducing the overall population in ESO PvP, unfortunately. But it gets odder. Two days later, ironically, Ironically, on January 12th, we got a little bit of mixed messaging here from Matt Firer, the studio director. The too long didn't read of this post was, nearly the entirety of 2022 would be dedicated to the re-architecting of the server that is affecting both PvP and Trials. Look, I don't know about re-architecting a server or how that actually works, but from what I understand, it's a lot of work, a lot of behind the scene thing, and they've been doing something like this for quite some time. I think they just had gathered so much qualitative and quantitative data, anecdotal and what they're seeing behind the game, that it was time to bear down and put some big resources in the game to keep it alive, fresh, active in the population in the two major end game play loops, PvP and PvE, alive and well. So again, this was a pretty big disappointment, uh, an entire year of not much to look forward to, but there was a little carrot on the stick that was positive that I got excited about. Quote, in the meantime, we'll consider additional ways to keep Cyrodiil and Battlegrounds interesting and exciting. For example, potential special rule sets or weekend events. And we will continue to work on bug fixes affecting combat. But we won't be adding any new features to PvP until the work mentioned above is complete. Wow, that's a big yikes. Not much coming to PvP in the entirety of 2022. In the 
downside of this was for over four months, again, overpromising, underlivering, and setting the stage for a very long, slow, boring, worsening PvP experience. With games like Elden Ring and Lost Ark, PvP became a wasteland, and oftentimes on PC and A, it was so dead I could only find fights on PCU during prime time or be relegated to battlegrounds and essentially doing mind numbing domination land grab games over and over and over rather than deathmatch, which I love. I have to be completely honest with you. I was not really looking forward to ESO in 2022. Now, why would I say that? Look, I like PVE and the Elder Scrolls Online. I like fashion. Housing folks have something to do, but with the card game coming, this was not my end game loop that I intended or was excited about playing, just being completely honest. Nothing against folks that like that sort of gameplay loop. I wanted the existing systems that I know that I love to be fixed and incentivized so I can play it over and over and over. The true strength of Cyrodiil is this. You're the main character, and you create your own story. It's a sandbox environment. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Sometimes you do the bombing, sometimes you get blown up. But you're the main character, and you impact the environment in the world like no other game or no other experience I've had in the MMO. The thing the game lacking isn't a massive sandbox full of action. It's two things, servers that work and incentives. And I promise to get to the positive part, but Zoss keeps taking hits on their performance. On April 1st, Zoss approached the final stage stages of database sharding, not to be confused with sharding, this did not solve the problem. Nope, sad face. But things were about to get better shockingly better. The studio director gave us another post on April 28th, indicating that some of ESO's server hardware was from 2012, 10 years old nearly. That's like having a Save by the Bell satellite phone in 2022. And that the initial phase or initial part of this process in upgrading and replacing would start on PC and a server first with no ETAs for EU, PC, or consoles. The most interesting part of this post is, I quote, this will not result in any appreciable performance gain in game, but will result in more reliable service overall that needs fewer unplanned maintenances, end quote. For once, Matt Fire, I'm incredibly glad you were wrong about this one. This changed everything on PCNA at least. So let me break down what this actually looked like in game and how it felt different. On May 2nd, we had nearly a full day of maintenance, but I started to get it blown up on Discord in the evening as folks logged in and started doing PvP. Deltia, have you tried Cyrodiil yet? Deltia, there's no lag. I can use my skills. It's pop locked and things work. It was shocking. I had the day off then taking care of some real life stuff, but started streaming on Wednesday, May 4th. After some Star Wars Royal Republic, I logged back into the Elder Scrolls Online for the end of my stream, and I was shocked at the difference. Not only was the population super high for a random Wednesday with no patch or no big event going, but the game was working well even during huge massive keep fights. So I wanted to further do something about this and maybe stress test it. On my normal stream day Friday, May 6, I asked myself honestly, Deltia, is this BS? Is this wishful thinking? Did I not do the test in stressful environments on Wednesday? What's really going on and should I make a YouTube video and share this with the community? So we got a huge group together and went zerging around doing the normal Cyrodiil thing. Ball group v ball group. Three faction zerg fight. Emperor keep take. Scroll fights. Hammer tri faction fights. I had no crashes, and my ping would stay right around 80 to 100 milliseconds most of the time. Keep in mind, I do have good internet. I then played off stream in prime time and did a toppling charge on my Magpar, and it worked. No skill delay, and it was buttery smooth. I got on my Stam Sork, and I hit undo from the Sigic Order, which basically never works, and bang, flawlessly ported me back to the area, and I survived and move on. Test after test, it worked. Now, granted, my frame rates would drop to around 25 at usually its lowest, but my latency with over 15 hours of gameplay never exceeded 200
150 and I never crashed once. That's unheard of. I've got to be honest with you. This has increased my hype, excitement, and enjoyment for the game so much and I really wanted to share this with you. Look, the game isn't perfect and this isn't going to make everything work flawlessly and other folks are going to have different experiences. But me, my friends, my viewers, and who've been watching the stream, it's a radical difference. I remember every night in Cyrodiil, I would avoid big faction stack fights, because as you would approach, you'd almost immediately robot and then disconnect. Nope, Rambo into a ball group, a scroll push, it works. This is exactly what I wanted from Elder Scrolls Online, my most cherished MMO. I don't need a whole lot of content. I need what I like to do to work. And the funny thing is, they didn't even think this was going to improve performance, and it did. But believe it or not, we're not done with the positive yet. On May 5th, Gina replied to the January 12, 2022 post which referenced weekend events and said, quote, Hey everyone, we wanted to pop in and let you know while we don't have any substantial changes or updates to share at this time, we're still here. We see your concerns and questions and wanted to let you know we are still working on things we mentioned in January. Thanks for all your patience and we'll provide a larger update when we have some new information to share. And including the previously mentioned weekend events we know you're anxious to hear more about. Now, if you know me, I'm constantly critical of ZeniMax Online Studios kind of putting this carrot out on the stick and then crickets for months. This was super exciting to me. I think the big thing that lacks in ESO, both in PvE and PvP, is really the incentives and reason to do content beyond obtaining gear. I played Star Wars Republic on May 4th, and while the game is no ESO, it does have ranked PvP mounts, costumes, dies, and leaderboards displayed on their official site. No, ESO PvP probably isn't going to be as popular as housing in the game, crafting rights gang. But this is it. This is a spark of hope with actual proof that Cyrodiil can work the way it should. That Zal may actually add weekend events or incentives. Again, not a perfect game. Not going to be a solution for every issue with the game, specifically in Cyrodiil, PvP, and beyond. But if I'm going to be super critical, I have to be honest when things are positive and they hit a home run. Whether it's accidental or intentional, I don't care. This is a piece of the game I absolutely love. And finally, I'm looking forward to 2022. No BS. But what do you think? Have you played on the server? Am I exaggerating? Console fam, are you excited for this piece? You are you disappointed you haven't got this? Leave me a comment below. Also, click that like, click that subscribe, and come watch me on twitch.tv slash Deltia. High energy, a lot of PvP action and gameplay, and if you like interacting with me, that's the best place to do it. 2022 for me was shaping up to be a bit of a disappointment with things that I don't necessarily like or want to see implemented in the game. But it's not always about me. Fortunately, this has reinvigorated my love for Cyrodiil and wanting to spend countless hours in it. And I hope you will too. Who would have known a random hardware refresh would radically change the game, even if unintentional. Thanks for watching.